Hey, we're kicking it down here in the basement, and I am very fortunate to be joined by Mr. Max Schaefer, CEO of Runic Games. How are you doing, sir? Very good. Thank you very, good. very much for, no problem. Uh, for stopping by and chatting for, for a little bit <laughs> about Torchlight. A lot of people, you know, myself included, have drawn pretty specific comparisons to the Diablo games with Torchlight. Uh, but I think you guys come by that comparison honestly, given given your background. Can you kind yeah. of tell us where you came from, for just for the people that don't know? Sure. My break into the industry was starting a, a company with my brother and David Brevik, um, and we started the company called Condor Incorporated that uh, made Diablo. And about halfway through making Diablo One, we got bought out by Blizzard and became Blizzard North, where we worked on all the Diablos through uh, the you know the Diablo Two expansion pack. Cool. So. Uh, I think it's probably within your right to make a Diablo-style game. Yeah, plus it's, it's not clear we can do anything else. Yeah, right? yeah. So oh, you're, you're, what you're doing, you're doing well, so I think that's fine. Um, what was the contrast like in like team size between like the first Diablo game and now Torchlight, which you've said has been like about two dozen people? Yeah, it's really remarkably similar. This is about the same size crew that that made uh, Diablo One, but you know Diablo One had uh, at least a semblance of multiplayer. People kind of romanticize it, but it became cheated to the point of unplayability sure. very fairly quickly. Um, so that took, and, and it did take quite a bit longer. I think the biggest difference nowadays is we have just so much better development tools than we did then. Going into this game, you know, you, you guys, I guess it must have been early on that you decided single player only, you know, like to save the co-op stuff for later. Um, right. Was that right. primarily just a, a function of the available resources for development? Is it just um, the amount of time that it would add on and that sort of thing? It seems like, well, we had a certain amount of time that we wanted to get an MMO out in. That was a, a time frame that uh, you know our publisher shared <laughs> with us, and to do a a, uh, a game that had a had multiplayer in it first would take up most of that time. I mean, we, there would be no Torchlight right now if we put multiplayer in. We'd okay. still be working on it and still fixing it because you don't want to put out something again that everyone's just going to cheat and is going to ruin the experience for a lot of people. So you have to do it right. Now to do it right takes a lot of time and a lot of development uh, resources. And it just seemed like it was a better idea for us to start with an even more manageable chunk, something that we knew we could get out and be fun and tight in, a, in less than a year, um, and uh, save the multiplayer for when we can actually do it right. So making an MMO is a small task, I'm sure. I'm sure you're well aware of that. Um, are you guys going to have to expand quite a bit? I mean, you know, you said you've got like the, the roughly two dozen people now. Right. Are you going to have to kind of add on to that team a lot, or do you see yourselves maybe outsourcing a lot of art? You know, like, what's the kind um, of production cycle looking like? Both, actually. We are going to add on to the crew, but we want to stay a small studio. You know, we want to be the type of studio where you talk to everybody every day. Um, and there aren't factions or people that are kind of hiding in the corners. Sure. So we want to stay under 40 people for sure. Uh, and we do do some outsourcing of art to uh, one of our favorite little uh, art houses in Shanghai um, that we've had great luck with. And... Uh, We'd like to keep doing that as well. Are we actually going to see, you know, the, the the same classes, the destroyer and the, the alchemist? Like, will those be there, or are um, we going to? Is it going to be kind of in the spirit of Torchlight, but all new kind of? Well, it has to. Exp Torchlight is just the one little town, right? Know? So right. we're expanding far beyond that. Okay. Um, and the character classes that are there now, we want to respect their existence in the game, but we're going to do different actual character classes okay. for the MMO. Okay. First of all, in the MMO, in MMOs, you've got to have a lot more character customization because you've got to be compared to everyone else. And you sure. don't want three different looks of people rocking around. You want sure. hundreds of different looks. So. Sure. Uh, so we're going to really start from the ground up with the classes. And we may work one or more of them back into it, but again, completely rework. Okay. So that probably means nothing in terms of like your save game carrying over into the... Yeah, no way, because that'll all be but, hacked. Yeah, yeah sure, of course. <laughs> does, that get, does that bother you guys at all? Like having, like knowing um, the people are out there digging into the save files? and, and It would it, bother us in a multiplayer game. Sure. In a single player game, it's something that we look forward to. And in fact, we're releasing our tools right. uh, any day now. They may even be up uh, already. <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, and they're the full, complete set of tools that we use to make the game. Not dumbed down for the consumer or anything. It's nothing disabled in them. So we want people to dig into it. We want people to make new things with it and do things we never even thought of. Can you dig as deep as, say, creating entirely new classes, you know, giving all kinds of stuff, new names, like new absolutely. art, like just absolutely everything? Absolutely everything. In fact, we've already released uh, the raw 3DS Max files we use for our character classes, plus tile sets, plus wardrobes and all that, so people can literally create new classes, completely new skills, new levels, um, pretty much as, as advanced as you want to get. It's easy to go in and make yourself a unique item that has your name that might pop out in game. That's what anyone can do. Sure. Uh, but the truly ambitious people will really be able to dig in and make an entirely new action RPG if they want it. How long uh, do you think before we see a Diablo 1 total conversion? <laughs> I don't know. That'll be cool, though. I'll play yeah. it for sure. Awesome. awesome. Um, so uh, you said that the MMO is, uh, is going to be free to play, at least in the past. Is that still the case? Yeah. Still the plan? We think that a, that a free to play, free to download, 
with a good item sales design is the best way to go for an MMO. Um, everyone that makes MMOs right now does it with a giant elephant in the room, that's World of Warcraft. Right. And uh, everyone has their World of Warcraft subscription, most of us do. Yeah. Um, and there's only so many subscriptions that, that you can have before it's really taking a big chunk out of your bill. And uh, we like, so we like the, uh, the free-to-play item sales model because you can put it away for a month, you can pick it back up, you can try 20 different games, you can focus on one, you can decide to pay, not pay. Um, it really is just the most flexible way. And the problem is that you have to have good item design for it. You can't be selling the best sword because that's going to ruin the experience for the people who don't play, who are out there working. And uh, so you got to design it in such a way that the items are not necessary to find the best stuff in the game, not necessary to be the best, you know, with one of the most powerful players in the game, uh, but do help the people who maybe don't have as much time to invest in whatever and help them go a little bit faster, maybe give them a little better shot at finding the things. But you got to find, you know, the fun in these games is from finding the loot. And so we don't want to take away from that at all. Sure. So, it, it, you know, it's a little harder than a subscription game to design a good system for, but I think in the end it's better for the customer. I've got a million little things I want to know, like, you know, um, have you figured out... I'm assuming like a lot of dungeons will be instance in, in the MMO. Like, are, are you thinking? Are you guys thinking like numbers of, of players in an instance at a time? Like, like uh, size you, of parties and stuff like that. Like, fortunately, the technology to do this is is pretty trivial. Mm -hmm. uh, to make it an instance, or to make it a shared thing, or to make it something that just has a certain maximum people before it generates another instance, those are not technologically difficult to do. So it's just a matter of what's fun and what we can make in the in the uh, available time. So we our intent is to have instance dungeons that are just for you or your party, shared dungeons that uh, you know fill up after a certain maximum number of people, and dungeons that are just always open. Sure. Yeah, you know, have a have a good mix of those. I okay. think is, is the best way. So to go. pretty much in every sense, it is a full fully featured MMO. Yes. Yes. Okay. Especially you know, and, and the overland areas will be pretty much completely shared. Yeah. So okay. you'll feel like you're traversing across a, a world, coming to a little dungeon entrance and. Sure. Down you go in. Have you have you thought about uh, again more just you know kind of tiny little questions, but uh, like the number of races in the game? I mean, obviously the the characters and the, the single player are all human, but you've got goblins and, and other sorts of monsters down there. You yeah, we expand that aspect. That's of the game. where we're still that's where we're still having internal conversations okay. about. So we don't really know exactly yet, but it'll be more obviously more choices than there were in uh, in the single player game, um, and hopefully pretty cool ones. Okay. Yeah. How about the uh, the branding now that you know? I mean, the, the single player game is, is taking off and it's really starting to become known by a lot of people. Do you feel compelled to keep that name? You know, this is going to be the Torchlight MMO, or is this just the beginning of kind of a larger franchise? I'm sure that's might be a little it's good, early. It's to a ask good that question. question. We'd really like to keep Torchlight in that in there somehow, just mm -hmm. so there is that connection, and we don't have to explain it to people all the time. Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, it is a larger world, uh, so that's something we're working on. Okay. We're open to suggestions, but <laughs> <laughs> send them in. Um, so obviously, you know, you guys are focused. Free copy it. if we use your name. <laughs> uh, you're focused on the MMO, obviously. That's probably going to take the lion's share of your time. But have you guys thought about doing any official expansions for Torchlight, or are you going to kind of leave that to the, the modders and the, the content creators? Um, I think we're going to mostly leave it to the modders and the content creators. However, our guys are already working with the mod tools and making some cool little stuff for themselves. Okay. And we're also going to be making assets that are very similar for the MMO that, the, that we used in the single-player game. So there's a fairly good chance some of that will just filter down just because why not? You know, may sure. as well uh, may as well give the, the the new toys to the to the people playing. Sure. So so you're thinking about uh, about two years until the the end of the launches? Is that yeah, roughly two years? Can hold you to that. Years. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, keep in mind, this is a game developer telling you what the schedule is going to be. Sure. And sure. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we did get it right with the single player version, yeah. though. So yeah. we're one for one. But uh, <laughs> fair enough. Fair but, enough. But you know, it's a it's always tough to know exactly. Okay. But that's that's what we're aiming for. What uh, what advice would you give to uh, avid Torchlight players uh, in terms of how they should wait until then? Yeah. <laughs> uh, make cool mod content so yeah. that we can play it too. <laughs> awesome. Only not so cool that it's going to ruin our productivity. Right? Fair enough, fair I'm already enough. worried about Diablo 3 coming in and <laughs> sweeping the office and sure. that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> cool. All right, Max, we'll appreciate your, uh, hey. your time. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thanks.